Hi everyone, this is Matt from Open Builds. In today's instructional video, we're gonna show you how to wire up your lead machine. So this is gonna be all inclusive, guys. We're gonna show you how to assemble your drag chain, your LED light ring, your micro limit switches, and this is all gonna be wired back to the black box motion control system. So make sure to follow along with the video, guys. We're gonna be running some G-code on this machine and actually testing out the black box. And let me tell you, it will not disappoint. Okay, so for this first step, we're gonna go ahead and gather these parts here. What we have is our four conductor wire times four. We have one at 13 feet, one at seven feet, and two at three feet. So all we need to do for this step is connect our wires to our connection system that's attached to our motors. So let's go ahead and turn our attention to the left side of the machine if you're to face the back. I'm currently at the back of the machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my attention to the left side. Okay, so here on the left side of the machine, this is my Y-axis motor. So as you can see with the connection system, we have two connectors attached to this motor. Now that's how every single motor is gonna come. So what we're gonna simply do is correspond our wire colors from our motor to our opposite connector here. So we're gonna loosen each one of these pens until we see these metal inserts hit the bottom of the plastic housing. And from there, we're just gonna correspond all the colored wires exactly how we see here. So since this is the Y-axis motor and it doesn't have as far to travel to the controller board the way that we're gonna wire the system, we're gonna go ahead and use our three foot four conductor wire. So let's go ahead and grab one of the three foot four conductor wires. It's gonna be one of your smallest. You're gonna have two at the same size. And from here, making sure that all my pins are loosened. See, these are already pre-loosened. If not, go ahead and loosen each one of these. And it's very important for the connection from your wire to your motor. So what I have here is red, blue, green, and yellow. I'm simply going to insert those into the connector and taking my flathead screwdriver, I'm gonna tighten these down. And it's that easy. So now my connection is completely established. I have my wire colors matching, my coil pairs on the motor. So red, blue, green, and yellow red, blue, green, and yellow. So that worked out great. And uh, just a heads up too for this connection system, these do come right out and connect back. So it's a really nice connection system. This simplifies all the electronics and wiring and all the wire management. So now that we have the Y complete, let's go ahead and move on to our next motor. Okay, so what we have here is uh, three more of our four conductor wires. So the 13 foot cable here is gonna to go to our Z axis. And then we have our seven foot, this is gonna to go to our X axis. And then our three foot cable here is gonna to go to our Y2 motor, which is on the right side. So it's gonna be on the opposite of the Y. So this is gonna be on the right side of the machine. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is let's go ahead and focus on the 13 foot cable here. And since we're facing the back of the machine, we'll have access to our Z axis motor. So let's go ahead and turn our attention there and Follow the same process that we just did for the Y-axis. So once again, taking the connection system here, we have two connectors already attached to our motors. I've already loosened every single one of these pins, so it's ready to accept the wire. So all I need to do is correspond the colored wires to what my motor shows here. So that's red, blue, green, and yellow. And it's just really easy to slide these wires right into the slot and just fasten them into place. Okay, so make sure that your wire colors do correspond, the red, blue, green, and yellow. And what I like to do is just give those wires a tug and make sure that they're inserted properly. And that looks good. So let's go ahead and move on to our next motor. Okay, for our next motor, we're gonna use our seven foot cable. So this is gonna be for our X axis. Since we're facing the back of the machine, it's gonna be on the left side. So let's go ahead and turn our attention to the left side of the machine for the X axis. Okay, so just like our other motors, once again, the connection system is already attached. All we wanna do is loosen those pens first and insert our wire in the corresponding order here for the colors. So once again, red, blue, green, and yellow. Okay, once again, give those a tug. Make sure that they're fully inserted. That looks great. So we're moving right along. Let's go ahead and move to our Y2 motor. 
So since we're facing the back of the machine here, we need to move to the right side of the machine. And we have our three foot cable here that's gonna to go to our Y2 motor. So let's go ahead and turn our attention there. Okay, so over here at the Y2 motor, once again, we're gonna check these uh, pin connectors, make sure all of them are loose. As you can see mine are at the bottom here, so they're loose. So we're simply just gonna correspond the colors once again, red, blue, green, and yellow. All right, and give those wires a tug, and that connection is solid. So that looks good. So now that we finished our last motor, that completes the wire connection to our motors. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. So on this next step, we are going to be assembling not only our LED light ring to our router spindle, but we're also going to be connecting our micro limit switches. So what we need to gather is three of our micro limit switches, our LED light ring. And what we have here is two conductor wire at 18 feet. And then we have our three conductor wire here, two at 13 feet and one at seven feet. So along with that, as you can see here, I'm facing the front of my machine. So if you need to go ahead and rotate your machine around, that way it's easier to install the LED light ring. And from there, we'll be moving across the machine to place our micro limit switches. So paying attention to the micro limit switch, you'll see the contents inside are going to look like this one here that I have broken out for you. The other two I've already assembled, just so I can show you how the assembly process looks for these micro limit switches. So you'll have two nylon spacers one with a larger diameter, which is this, uh, this spacer on the back end of the micro limit switch. And then you have your drop in TNA attached to the screw. Inside, you also have a nylon spacer, which is to support the PCB, which is the circuit board material on the micro limit switch. So you have that one inside and the screw runs through both. Now what I like to do specifically is run the screw head through this side where your additional screws attach to the micro limit switch. So first taking the bottom plate here with the micro limit switch attached, let's go ahead and grab our additional plate. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and align this into position and tighten it down with our M3 screws. And I like to just start these off by uh, hand turning these and take your ball driver and tighten it into place. Okay, and then take your other M3 self tapper and tighten that into place. And that completes the encasing of the PCB to the micro limit switch. From there, you simply take one of your nylon spacers, the smaller one here, run it in between the PCB. And from there, we're gonna run our screw through this side of the micro limit switch. Take the uh, large nylon spacer, place that. And then I like to take my drop in T-nut and just thread that onto the screw. And that completes the assembly of the micro limit switch. So what you'll see is your additional male connectors here. These will be attaching to our three conductor wire. So we'll get to that in a minute, but first let's go ahead and turn our attention towards the LED light ring. Now all I've done is I've just detached my router spindle mount. It's pretty simple. You just loosen the screws where the drop in T-nuts are and pull it right off. It's actually really simple. So from the back end, as you can see, the open belt is upside down. I'm gonna take these two black angle corner connectors off and then I'm gonna mount the LED light ring. So let's go ahead and grab our ball driver here and loosen these screws up. Just put the black angle corner connectors to the side and let's mount the LED light ring. Now you wanna mount it exactly how I have it. So each one of these LEDs need to be facing down towards your work area. So since this is upside down, that's exactly how it needs to be placed. So next, let's just go ahead and put our black angle corner connectors back onto our router spindle mount. I'm going to mount them on the outer holes here of the LED light ring. Okay, so that completes the mounting of the LED light ring. And as you can see, our position is flush to the mount itself. So there's no issues when you're trying to run your router spindle through this mount. So that looks good. Let's go ahead and turn our attention to the Z axis and we'll reattach this router spindle mount. So one thing I wanna point out is, as you can see here, I have marks on my Z axis on both sides and this indicates my placement. So we took a measurement on the mechanical assembly. So we went two inches up the base and that's from the uh, C-beam end mount to our Z axis. 
Now that's at two inches. That's exactly where we're going to mount our bottom black angle corner connector. Okay, so once you have the router spindle mount attached back to the Z axis, just make sure each one of those screws is tight and that looks excellent. So let's go ahead and move forward. Okay, so back here at the micro limit switches, what we're going to do is just go ahead and set this 18 foot cable to the side that goes to our LED light ring. So we have our three conductor wire times three and the two at 13 feet, we're going to go ahead and attach first. So that's going to be for our Z axis and our X axis. The seven foot cable is going to attach to our Y. So we'll leave that to the side for now. Now taking one end of the three conductor wire, we need to correspond this to our connections on the micro limit switch. So we have black for ground, red for power, and blue for signal. Taking a look at the PCB, which is circuit board material, if you're confused of the term PCB, you'll see that we have labels here, which makes it really easy to correspond these wires. So we have ground, our positive, and our signal. So that means black, and that means positive, which would be red. Signal is gonna be blue. The way that we're gonna know how to connect that to our male pin connector here is just to go ahead and attach it now. And as you can see, we need blue to the right, red in the center, black to the left. So that's how we're gonna wire these. So just like we did our four conductor wire, we're gonna loosen each one of these pen connectors on the top of the connector. And that way we get a solid connection with our wires. It's very important because sometimes you can actually insert the wire and think that it's connected, but really it's not. And you'll have issues once you have all this wire ran back and you're trying to run some G-code. So it's definitely just uh, a good idea just to go ahead and do this the correct way, loosen those pins and then connect your wires. So I have those loosened. So, like I said before, blue is going to be to the right, red is in the center, and black is going to be to the left. So just like so, and then I'm going to tighten these down. Alright, give those a tug, make sure that they're not coming loose, and that looks great. So let's go ahead and attach this to the micro limit switch. Once again, making sure that our wires do correspond, so we have blue with the signal, red to the positive, black to the ground. That looks excellent. So. Let's go ahead and attach our additional three conductor wire to this male connector. Once again, loosen those terminals. And once you have those loosened, let's just go ahead and insert the three conductor wire. So once again, starting with blue first on the right side, red to the center, and black to the left. And once again, let's go ahead and connect this to our micro limit switch. So now that we have that complete, let's go ahead and take one of our 13 foot three conductor wires with the micro limit switch attached, and let's go ahead and turn our attention towards the Z axis. Okay, so over here at the Z axis, you'll see that my micro limit switch position here is gonna go on this front track, and then I'll lock it into place with my drop-in T-nut. Now the key here is you want the micro limit switch to interact with this nylon hex nut on the wheel. So once you get to the bottom position of your Z-axis, which is your max travel, you want it to touch that micro limit switch. So that's exactly how I'm gonna place this micro limit switch. So now to test to see if I have this in the right position, I'm gonna go ahead and bring the Z-axis to an upright position and you'll see it interact with the switch itself. So that's precisely what we want. We want that interaction right there between the switch and the wheel. Perfect. As you can see, my connector is facing up, and this is for the purpose of wire management. So we'll put a slot cover here in the slot, and we'll make sure that this wire is nice and hidden, and it runs back to our drag chain. Okay, so for our next micro limit switch, which will be for our X axis, since this is a 13 foot cable, we need to go ahead and connect that to the left side of our X axis. So facing the front of the machine, over here at the left front position of our X axis, that's exactly where we're gonna go ahead and connect our micro limit switch. So during a homing cycle, you're always gonna bring your machine to the front left position. Okay, so coming over here to the left side of the machine, we're gonna go ahead and place our X axis micro limit switch on this front track here of the C-beam. And the only thing that we need to do is just change the position of our screw. That way our plunger interacts with our gantry plate. So just take off that drop in T-nut and change the position here of the screw. Okay, from there what I like to do is position this right next to the cast corner connectors. 
and then taking your ball driver, just go ahead and fasten that into place. And the wire should be hanging down, and what we'll do is just run that underneath the C-beam here. Okay, so last we have our three conductor wire at seven feet, and this will attach to our last micro limit switch. So once again, we're gonna go ahead and run our wire order into that male pin connector. So it'll be blue on the right side, red in the center, black on the left. So again, make sure to loosen those connectors. All right, give those a tug, make sure that they're inserted correctly. That looks great. And let's go ahead and attach this to our micro limit switch, making sure all of our wires do correspond. Okay, so this will attach to our Y axis. So since we're facing the front of the machine, we want our Y axis micro limit switch to be towards the right. That way we can run it back with all our additional wires. Basically all of our wire is gonna end up to the right side of the machine and run back to the very back of the machine back to our controller, which is the black box. So what we need to go ahead and do is turn our attention towards the right front side of the machine. So let's go ahead and do that now. So on the right side of the machine here, we're gonna go ahead and place our Y-axis micro limit switch in this front track of the C-beam. And this will interact with our Y gantry plate on the right side. So once again, let's just go ahead and flip the screw around. That way we have our plunger facing the gantry plate and that's how it will interact. So just take the screw back out. And this really just shows how easy it is to change the position of these micro limit switches. It's a really simple adjustment and you can always adjust the position according to how you want to set your machine up. Just going to thread on the drop in T-nut here. And for the position, we want to make sure that it's in front of our cast corners. That's an indication of our max travel because the wheels will touch that before it touches the micro limit switch. So just make sure you align that properly and then just lock that into place. So lastly, we need to go ahead and turn our attention to our LED light ring. We'll be attaching our 18 foot cable here to that green connector on the end of the LED light ring. Okay, so here on the LED light ring, you'll see two terminals. One is gonna be positive, the other is negative. On the right side, this will be positive. So with our 18 foot cable, you'll see red and black. We're simply going to attach the red to the right side, which will be our positive, and then the black, which will be our ground on the left side. So all we need to do is just go ahead and loosen up these terminals here and insert your wire. Once that's complete, just go ahead and tighten it down. Give that a little tug, make sure that those are inserted properly and that looks good. So we'll take our additional wire here and toss it over with our others. And on our next step, we'll be organizing all of our wires. So let's go ahead and move forward. So on this next step, we're gonna go ahead and label all of our wires. So just grab some painter's tape or masking tape and a permanent marker. That way we can label all of these wires specific to the point of origin. So each one of these wires, just wanna make sure to track it all the way back to where it starts. And then from there, you can go ahead and label it correctly. So we're gonna start with our Z-axis motor first, which is located right here at the top of the Z-axis. So we're gonna locate that wire and label it ZM for Z motor. So once you have the wire located, let's go ahead and grab some painter's tape here. And what I like to do is wrap the tape around the wire completely instead of making a flag. And the reason for doing that is the flag will rip on the drag chain when we're feeding these wires through. So just wrap that around completely. And from there, we're just gonna go ahead and label this ZM for Z motor. Okay, so once you have that complete, just put that wire to the side and let's move on to the next. Okay, the next wire I'm gonna go ahead and locate is the three conductor wire here that's attached to our Z-axis micro limit switch. So that's gonna be down past the X-axis C-beam and it's attached to that front face of the Z-axis. You can also tell because this is a three conductor wire, not a four or a two. The LED light ring is gonna be a two conductor, micro limit switches are gonna be a three conductor, and then motors are gonna be four conductor. So this is our micro limit switch here on the Z-axis. So I'm just gonna go ahead and label this one ZML, Z micro limit. Okay, once you have that complete, let's go ahead and move on to the next. The next one I'll grab here is the LED light ring. So once again, easy way to tell which one this is specifically is this will be a two conductor wire and I'll just label this one LED. Now, if you wanna label these differently, that's completely up to you. This works well for me but if you remember them some other way, by all means, as long as you can remember which wire is which, go ahead and label it that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and label this one LED. 
Once that's complete, let's go ahead and move on to the next. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my X-axis micro limit switch. So that'll be on the right side of the machine if you're facing the back. Once again, this is a three conductor wire. So I'm gonna label this one XML, X micro limit. So next I'm gonna go ahead and grab my X motor wire, which is on the left side of the machine if you're to face the back. And this is a four conductor wire. And I'll label this one XM for X motor. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the Y micro limit switch, which is facing the left side, the left front side of the machine if you're to face the back. Once again, this will be a three conductor wire. So we'll label this one YML, Y micro limit. So the next wire I'm gonna go ahead and label is our Y motor, which is on the left side of the machine if you're to face the back. Once again, this is a four conductor wire here. And we'll label this one YM. Okay, so last we're gonna have our Y2 motor, which is our clone to the Y, also known as the A axis motor, which is on the right side of the machine if you're to face the back. Once again, four conductor wire. And we will label this one Y2M. So that completes the organizing and labeling of all of our wires. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. So on this next step, we are going to be attaching our flexible tubing to our Z axis. So what I have here is the flex tubing. I have a slot cover here, which I've cut down to 190 millimeters. So I'll put that on the front title screen. And we have two of our flex tubing clamps, one M5 15 millimeter screw and one M5 10 millimeter screw. In addition to that, we'll have our ball driver for this assembly. So let's go ahead and get started first by running our slot cover here on the front left side of our Z-axis. As you can see right now, I'm facing the back of the machine. So what we need to go ahead and do is move to the left side of the machine for you to face the back. From there, we're gonna run all of our wires into the slot cover and then run it back towards our gantry plate. So the only two wires that we're gonna run into that slot cover is our LED light ring wire along with our Z-axis micro limit switch. So taking our slot cover, we're gonna take two of these wires run it into the slot here, and then place that slot cover into the slot here. What I like to do is just slide it down to the position that I want, obviously not putting too much pressure on these wires. So that should be the end result right here. You should see that slot cover slip into the slot rather nicely, and then we're gonna run these wires back to the C-beam end mount facing our gantry plate. So back to the back of our machine, we'll see these three cables here. Now these are all going to be inserted into that flex tubing. So what we need to do is just go ahead and grab our flex tubing and let's go ahead and insert all the wires into the flex tubing. Now from there, we'll take our flex tubing clamp along with our M5 15 millimeter screw and we're gonna attach this clamp to this top end of the flex tubing. And what I like to do is bring the flex tubing to a downward position like so, clamp it into place, and don't worry if it unplugs, it's not a big deal, we can always plug that back in, and take that 15 millimeter screw, and on this hole of the C-beam end mount, we're gonna go ahead and lock this into place. Okay, so that's in there nice and tight, and what we'll do is just go ahead and reconnect our Z-axis motor wire. So taking our flex tubing clamp, we're gonna go ahead and clamp it on the bottom of the flex tubing. As you can see the position here is the holes are going to align with our tapped hole on the extra large plate. So that's precisely what we want there. From there, the position should sit just like so. So from here, the wires will enter the X-axis drag chain and that'll work out perfect. So let's just go ahead and attach our 10 millimeter screw. Okay, so now that we have our flex tubing in place, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. So on this next step, we're gonna be installing our X-axis drag chain. So as you can see, I have my parts laid out here and the X-axis drag chain will be attaching to our cable tray, which is a 20 by 20 here on the bottom. So the parts we need to go ahead and gather is our X-axis drag chain, which is at a thousand millimeters, a single L bracket, an M5, 15 millimeter screw, two M3, eight millimeter screws, two M3 T-nuts, one M5 T-nut, our tooling will have our ball driver set, a power drill, and of course we have our slot cover here, which will be covering our micro limit switch wire. And I've cut this down to 930 millimeters. 
so it'll fit into the 20 by 20 track. So to get started, let's first go ahead and move over to the left side of the machine. So taking the power drill, I'm just gonna go ahead and take this end cap off. So before we put in the M3 T-nut, we need to go ahead and slide in our slot cover. So what I like to do is actually just slide it into the track, the 20 by 20. And the reason for doing so is it's just easier when you try to install the slot cover. It's just, it goes in really nice when you just slide it into place here. So we're just gonna slide that all the way down, making sure we have plenty of room to insert our micro limit switch wire, which is for the X axis. Okay, so once we have that in place, we have room here. Let's go ahead and insert one M3 T-nut, and that's for the mounting of the drag chain. Once again, make sure that this flange side is facing down into the track of the 20 by 20, and we'll leave it right here towards the end. And let's go ahead and put our end cap back into place. So returning back to the back of the machine here, what we needed to go ahead and do is run that micro limit switch wire through the slot cover. So let's go ahead and turn our attention towards the right side of the machine if you're gonna face the back. Okay, so go ahead and take the three conductor wire here on the right side. What we're gonna do is just run that through the slot cover all the way down towards our M3 Tina. Okay, so once that wire is ran through, let's go ahead and turn our attention back to our drag chain. Okay, so let's go ahead and take our single L bracket here with one of our M5 15 millimeter screws, an M5 T-nut. Let's turn our attention to the X carriage, which is located right here on the back of the machine. So in the center hole of the X carriage is where we're gonna mount this single L bracket. So taking the single L bracket, make sure that the orientation is what I have here. So the hole spacing that's closest to the edge is the one that's going to be mounting to this hole. So just run that 15 millimeter screw through. And on the back end, we're gonna tie in this T-nut. And what I do is I just twist it by hand just to get it started. And then from there, I can tighten it down with my ball driver. All right, so now that the single L bracket is in place, let's go ahead and turn our attention back to the drag chain. So the drag chain is the next part of this assembly. What you need to make sure first is that your drag chain end caps are in the right orientation. Each end, should be mirroring each other, just like so. And the reason for doing this is the drag chain is actually going to mount from underneath the single L bracket. So we'll have a T-nut that ties on top. And then this end will attach to the M3 T-nut, which is in the 20 by 20 V slot rail. So once you have those end caps situated, what we're gonna do now is run the wire through the drag chain. So what I like to do is just grab some painter's tape and I'm gonna bundle these wires together. That way it's easy to feed through the drag chain. So here on the carriage, you'll see three wires. We have our Z motor, we have our Z micro limit switch, and then our LED light ring. Those are the only wires that we're going to run through this drag chain. The micro limit switch obviously is running through the slot cover, but that will run through the Y axis drag chain. So locating the ends of all of these wires, which you'll see that the LED light ring is slightly larger at 18 feet. Just make sure that you grab the very end of that wire and tape it with the rest. So now that I've located the ends of all three wires, now I'm going to take painter's tape. I'm gonna tape these all together. And this really helps when trying to run this through the drag chain. I can't stress it enough. So what I do is I just run it up to the stripped wire here. That way I don't get any snags while I'm trying to run this through the drag chain. And go ahead and grab the drag chain, making sure that the wires are entering in through this top portion of the drag chain. Once you have the wires through the drag chain, what I do is just pull the slack through. Okay, so once you have all the wire ran through the drag chain, as you can see, I left myself a little slack here. That way I can mount this properly to that single L bracket. So the opposite end of the drag chain, I'm just gonna set over here for now. Okay, so taking the top end of the drag chain here, we're going to place the drag chain just like so using this right hole here to mount it to the single L bracket. So go ahead and take one of the M3 eight millimeter screws and we're gonna run that through the drag chain here and then through the single L bracket and then take the M3 T-nut and tie that right on top. So once you find that M3 T-nut, just tighten down the screw here. And what I like to do is leave myself a little room here. That way I'm not putting too much strain on the drag chain. So you can see I have about half of an inch here left between the end cap and the drag chain. So just tighten that down. So now what I like to do is any additional slack here that's hanging off of the drag chain. So I like to run that through. So I just pull from the other end and make sure that it's just nice and tight. 
So now as you can see, we have our x-axis drag chain assembled and it looks really sharp. Great job so far. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step. So on this next step, we will be assembling our y-axis drag chain here to our y-axis. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and rotate your machine to the right side. So you can see the front of my machine is over here to the left. The back of my machine is over here to the right. And as you can see, our x-axis motor here is facing us. So just go ahead and position your machine in front of you like this. It just really helps with the assembly. In addition to that, we have all of our components here. So for this step, we need to go ahead and gather these parts. We have our y-axis drag chain which is at a thousand millimeters. We have a double L bracket, single L bracket, two M3 T nuts, two M3 eight millimeter screws, one M5 30 millimeter screw, a 20 millimeter aluminum spacer, two M5 eight millimeter screws, and two drop in T nuts. And of course I have my ball driver set here. In addition to that, we have a slot cover, which I've cut down to 930 millimeters. So that's a good place to start. Just go ahead and cut that down and let's go ahead and move forward. So the first thing we want to do is just go ahead and grab your single L bracket here, an M5 30 millimeter screw, the 20 millimeter aluminum spacer. And we're going to go ahead and set this up on the right side of this machine. So taking the single L bracket, make sure that you have this oriented properly. So what we're looking for is that spacing that is further away from the edge here. What we need to do is make sure that that is facing us and that will be mounting to the drag chain. So the one that's closest to the edge is going to mount to our 20 by 40 here. So let's go ahead and run the 30 millimeter screw through that slot of the single L bracket. Add your 20 millimeter aluminum spacer and we're going to tighten this into place with our ball driver. And what I just did there is I just straightened up the single L bracket. And you'll notice that this 20 millimeter screw fits into that 20 by 40 because it is pre-threaded. So go ahead and install that and from there Let's go ahead and move to our double L bracket and the mounting position that it will be mounted. Okay, so similar to the single L bracket with the double L bracket, we also want to use these holes that are closest to the edge. So what we're going to do is just go ahead and take the eight millimeter screws and run them through each one of these holes and take those drop in T nuts and we're going to thread them onto each one of these screws. Now for the mounting position of this double L bracket, we want to align it here with our cast corner connectors and these two center slots. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and line up the double L bracket with the cast corners. I'll just make sure that's nice and sturdy. We don't want our drag chain going anywhere. Okay, so once we have the double L bracket into position, now what we're going to do is turn our attention to the left side here, which is where our micro limit switch is going to be. And over here at the micro limit switch, we're going to take our three conductor wire and run it through this bottom slot here accompanied by our slot cover that we've cut down to 930 millimeters. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and start it just like so and then I'm going to slide it all the way down the track here. Make sure to take the additional length and just run it through your gantry plate. And then finish up by sliding that slot cover all the way down. So as you can see over here on the right side, I have just enough room so my wire comes out and it'll run to the back of the machine with the rest of the additional wires. Okay, so next we have everything prepped, right? We have our double L brackets, our single L brackets in place, We've got our slot cover with our three conductor wire all in place, everything looks good. We need to go ahead and run our wire through our drag chain. So once again, we have our drag chain at a thousand millimeters, just like the X axis, we need to make sure that our end caps are in place for the mounting of the drag chain. So a good way to check that is just to make sure that your end caps look exactly like mine. So unlike the X axis, these are not going to mirror each other. So what we have here is the same position on both ends. One is gonna lay on the double L bracket, the other is gonna mount to the single L bracket. Okay, so with that being said, we need to go ahead and feed our wire through the top end of the drag chain here. And let's go ahead and do that now. So finding the end of the wires here, similar to what I did with the X axis drag chain, is I taped all these wires together. So all we're gonna include with the additional wires that were already bundled is our X axis motor. And then of course our X axis micro limit switch, which ran through that slot cover and out. So we're gonna include those two wires. Of course our Y axis micro limit switch is not included with this. And once you tape these, we're gonna go ahead and run it through our drag chain. So once again, make sure that you're at the top position of the drag chain and let's go ahead and feed these wires through. So once you have the wire through the end of the drag chain, we're simply gonna pull all the additional slack through. Okay, so once you have all the wire fed through the drag chain, 
can see I'm just leaving a little slack here. We can pull that out once we have the drag chain mounted. What I like to do is mount this first to our double L bracket here, just taking the other end and placing it into position. So what we're gonna do next is just find that left hole here on the drag chain. We're gonna run an M3 eight millimeter screw through that hole, place it onto the second hole of the double L bracket. And from the bottom end, we're gonna go ahead and tie in our M3 T-nut. What I do first is hand tighten it, and then I just go ahead and tighten it down with this ball driver. All right, perfect. So now we have this attached to the double L bracket. Let's go ahead and move to the back of the machine here to the single L bracket. So over on this end, what I'm gonna do is run my eight millimeter screw through the center of the drag chain. And the reason for the change of positions is based on the spacing between our gantry plate and the back end of this 20 by 40. It works out best using the center hole here for the back end of the drag chain, just so it aligns perfectly with the other end of the drag chain. So from there, all you need to do is drag your machine off slightly. That way we can tie in that M3 T-nut to the bottom of the single L bracket. So I'm just gonna slide my machine back. So now I'm just gonna tighten this into place here. And one nice thing too, is the single L bracket does have that slotted hole. So you can adjust the position slightly of the drag chain if you feel like there's too much tension put on the drag chain when moving the machine forward. So that's always an option too to keep in mind. So what we're gonna do now is I just uh, move my machine back into position here. Just gonna throw all my wires towards the back. That way we can wire and organize all of our wires to the black box. So now as you can see, we have our Y-axis drag chain assembled here to our Y-axis. Everything's starting to look nice and neat. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we are going to be wiring up our black box controller, which is super exciting and it's gonna be super easy. It's a plug and play system here, so it's just extremely easy to wire up and man, this thing looks sweet. So as far as the assembly of the black box, we do have an additional video, which I will link that in the description so you guys can build that up, as well as the power case kit here. They're quick videos, so you can just follow along, build them up real quick, and then uh, follow along with this step here so we can wire up this controller to the lead machine. In addition to that, we need our connectors, which are already provided onto the black box. So once you assemble this, you will take those connectors off. So what I have here is four of the male connectors, and we have three, three conductor male connectors here, and two M5 six millimeter screws, two drop in T-nuts. We have the power cable, which comes with your power supply kit, along with the power wire here. In addition to that, we do have the two pin male connector, which is uh, going to attach to the power supply. To get started here, let's go ahead and pull a couple of our motor wires. And we're gonna go ahead and start connecting those to our four pin male connectors here. So the first one that I pulled is the Z motor. So as you can see, it's four conductor wire here. And we had labeled all these wires, so now we know which motor is which. So let's go ahead and connect this one first to our male connectors. So like we did on previous steps, we're gonna loosen each one of these pins on the connector so we can fully accept the wire. So as you can see, those metal inserts are laying at the bottom of the connector, which is exactly what we want. So now taking the four conductor wire, we need to make sure that the color order pair is matching what we have from our motors. So let's go ahead and check out one of our motors here on the machine. So here on the motor, you'll see that the female connector that's adapted to the male connector here on the motor, we have red, blue, green, and yellow, and it's running from right to left with the pins upright. So what we wanna do is match that. So for every single motor, we're gonna work our colors from right to left using red, blue, green, and yellow. So now taking the four conductor wire here, let's go ahead and make sure that our order pair is correct. We'll do red, then blue, green, and yellow. Just kind of hold those in place and then tighten down your, your pens here. Okay, once you have those inserted, just give those a tug, make sure that they're inserted. Looks like my yellow wire wasn't fully inserted, so I'm gonna loosen up that connector real quick and place that back in. Just goes to show you how easy it is to miss that connection. So just make sure that it's fully inserted there and then tighten it back down. Okay, once again, I'm gonna give these a tug, make sure that they're inserted properly. That looks good. So turning our attention here to the black box, what we have here is our motor output section, which is also going to include our limits and a probing switch. So if you do have a probe, it's as simple as just adapting that to the probe switch here and uh, adapting that to the software and you're good to go. So we're gonna pay attention to is a motor section down here. 
So you'll see that these are all four conductor female connectors. So what we need to do is take our male connector and adapt that to the Z motor here. And let's go ahead and do that with our additional motors. So next I have my Y motor. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect that next. Same exact way, red, blue, green, and yellow, but the pins facing up. All right, give those a tug, make sure that they're inserted properly. That looks good. So this will be for our Y motor. It's turning our attention back to the black box. We need to go ahead and plug it into where it says Y motor. All right, moving forward to the next motor. So what I have here is the Y2 motor, which is the clone to the Y, also known as the A axis. So once again, we're gonna loosen these pins and work our ordered pair from right to left, red, blue, green, and yellow. All right, so I'm gonna give those a tug, make sure that all the wires are inserted. That looks good. So this is the Y2, back to the black box. You'll see a section, this is Y2 motor. Go ahead and plug that in. And let's move to our last motor, which will be the X. So I've located the X motor. Once again, loosen the pins, insert your ordered pair, red, blue, green, and yellow. And let's connect that one. Okay, so now that we have those inserted, once again, just check to make sure that those are inserted properly. That looks good. X motor, plug it in, and it's that easy. So next, we're going to go ahead and focus on our micro limit switches up here. So let's go ahead and locate those. So what I have here is the X micro limit switch. So I'm going to go ahead and take one of my three pin male connectors and loosen each terminal. And as far as the order of the colors being inserted into the male connector, a good way just to reference back to the black box and you'll see here we have indicators of ground, positive, and signal. So that means we need to work our way from left to right with black, red, and blue. So that's with the pins facing up. All right, give those a tug, make sure that they're inserted properly. And we know this is our X micro limit switch. So coming back here to the black box, you'll see that we have labels up top here for X limit. That's where we're gonna insert this. All right. Now that that's inserted, let's go ahead and move on to the next micro limit switch. So the next one I found here is the Y micro limit switch. Once again, the order pair will stay the same. So black, red, and then blue, the last terminal here. So just loosen up these terminals and we'll insert the wire and plug it in. All right, so this was the Y micro limit switch. So right here we have an indication of Y limit. So that's where we're gonna plug this in. Now let's move to our last, which is the Z-axis micro limit switch. So I found my Z-axis micro limit switch. Uh, same process here, loosen the pins. Make sure you have your wire colors correct, and we'll plug that in. All right, give those a tug. Looks good. And we'll bring that over to the Z-axis limit here, and plug that in. And this is as simple as that. All right, so we're gonna just put this to the side for right now. Let's go ahead and move to our power supply. So what we have here is our two pin male connector that's gonna go into the output section of the power case. We're gonna go ahead and loosen these pins up. And what we need to do is run our LED light ring to this pin and, and put it into the output section of the power supply. Now, one thing that I will show you first is with the power supply, if you have any issues with it, actually turning on. What you need to do is just switch the switch here on the side. Standard, it comes with the, the 230 volt. What you need to do is switch it to the 115 volt. So this is for here in the States. If you're elsewhere, you might need to use the 230 volt. So just keep that in mind. Pretty easy to just to switch with the flathead. So let's go ahead and locate our LED light ring. So I found my LED light ring here. I'm gonna go ahead and twist these wires, make sure that they're nice and uniform. And once that's complete, on the bottom of the output section of the power case, you'll see indicators of positive and negative. So positive on the right, negative on the left. So that's black and red here with the pins facing up. Just tighten that down and connect it to the power case. So I'm just going to insert this on the left side here. And then taking my power wire, which comes with the power supply. Once again, black is our negative. White is our positive. We want to make sure that these do line up just like this. So I'm just going to input that into the output section here, and it's that easy. So in addition to that, we do have our power plug here. All you have to do is connect that into this section here of the power supply. And when we're ready to turn this bad boy on, we'll just go ahead and plug it in, hit this switch, and that'll provide power 
to your black box. So that's the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and connect this cord to our black box. So here on the black box, on the opposite end of the motor section, we have here is our input for our power supply. Okay, and we also have our serial port. So this is what we'll connect our serial port to and then connect it to our laptop or computer. Let's go ahead and connect our power supply real quick. So just plug it in. As you can see, black's on the left, white is our pasta, which is on the right, and that looks great. So next we're gonna go ahead and mount our black box to our 20 by 40 extrusion here on the frame of the lead machine. So what we need to do is just go ahead and set our power supply to the side. You'll notice you have plenty of length here for your LED light ring and your power cable. So we're just gonna set that to the side for now. And usually what I like to do with my power supply is I mount it to another surface on whichever table that I'm working on, either that or you can rest it on the floor. But I like it to be out of the way, that way I can do all my wire management to the controller and it just looks nice and aesthetic. So taking the black box, you'll see that we have two of our M5 6mm screws and two drop in T-nuts left. We go ahead and bring this over to the right side. So we're going to extend the run of our lengths of wire across this back end. And don't worry, it's going to look messy at first. But we're going to go ahead and tidy that up on our next step. So we have some corrugated tubing we're going to use and it's going to look sweet. So let's go ahead and grab the black box and let's bring it over to the right side of the machine. So here on the right side of the machine, if you're to face the back, you'll see that we have holes here that are aligned for the purpose of mounting this black box. So you can mount it in many different configurations, which is extremely convenient. So what I like to do is use the second one here on both sides. So you see, we do have a connector in the way. We can always just pop that out, super simple and plug it back in. So let's go ahead and insert these M5 six millimeter screws first on the right side here. And then what I'm gonna do is thread on that drop in T-nut, just like so. And then for the opposite side, I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this one here. Remember we have these labeled, so don't concern yourself with that. And go ahead and attach your M5 six millimeter screw. And once again, I'm gonna take that drop in T-nut and thread it onto the screw. And let's go ahead and plug in our connector. Now taking the black box, I'm gonna maneuver it to a position right here on the right side of the machine. And then I'm gonna fasten down each one of these drop in T-nuts. So I'm using this top slot here, the 20 by 40. So I'm gonna tie in my drop in T-nuts on this top slot. Okay, so now that we have our black box mounted, once again, this is not definitive. You can always move this position to wherever you like. What I have here on the lead machine is uh, rubber feet. So it brings this up slightly. So I could actually bring this down to the bottom slot if I wanted to, but I actually kind of like this position. It gives me uh, some options here for wire management, which we're definitely gonna utilize. So that's what the black box looks like when it's mounted to the lead machine. And man, it is looking sharp. So let's go ahead and move forward. All right, so on this next step, we're gonna go ahead and pretty much tidy everything up together. So what I have here is some corrugated tubing at 24 inches. I've got three of my flexible tubing clamps. I have two M5 eight millimeter screws to drop in T-nuts, self-tapping screw, 25 zip ties. My tooling, I have some snips. You can use scissors basically to cut off the excess of these zip ties. Got a power drill and my M5 ball driver. So to get started first, let's go ahead and grab some of our zip ties. What we're going to do is turn our attention towards the motors on the back of the machine. As you can still see we're facing the back of the machine here. So we're going to do a lot of our wire management. What we need to do is zip tie a couple of our uh, motor connectors. We're going to connect those to the 40 millimeter spacers just to really bring those up into a tight position so we're not having to worry about them dragging or pulling. So let's go ahead and grab some of our zip ties and let's turn our attention to the right side of the machine. So over here on the right side of the machine here, we're facing the clone motor. So what we need to do is just go ahead and zip tie this connector together. So what I like to do is just take one of the zip ties, I run it through the middle of the wire, so between the green and blue, and the same on the opposite end, and then I zip tie these together. And you don't have to over tighten it. The purpose of this is just to keep this connector from disconnecting. Let's go ahead and cut off the excess here. Now, since we have this zip tied, I'm gonna take one more zip tie. I'm gonna run it underneath the zip tie that's already existing. And I'm gonna attach this to my 40 millimeter spacer here. And what I'm going to do is run this wire underneath the black box. So once I find my position, then I'll tighten it down. Okay, so that completes the zip tying of this connector. So once again, like I said, we're running that wire underneath the black box. So let's go ahead and turn our attention to the left side of the machine if you're to face the back. So the same thing on this side, we're gonna go ahead and zip tie this connector. 
And once we have that zip tied, we'll run another zip tie through and connect that to our 40 millimeter spacer here. Okay, so since we have those zip ties in place, we're gonna turn our attention to the flex tubing here and our additional wire lengths. So you'll see that we have all this additional wire. What we're gonna do is insert that into the flex tubing. From there, we're gonna go ahead and clamp it down with our flex tubing clamps and mount those to the 20 by 40 V slot here. So taking the wire, making sure that underneath the black box, we have that clone wire, and that way it's just nice and hidden. And from there, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my flex tubing, and I'm just gonna go ahead and contain these wires. You can see what I like to do is just spread open one side, lay the wire in, and then pry the other side out, and then it'll enclose. You just gotta kinda work with it. So now that I've got the wire inserted, or at least started so far, what I like to do before I go too far along is just clamp this end here to prevent the wires from coming loose. So take one of your flex tubing clamps and clamp it in the orientation that you see here. So once you have that clamped into place, we're gonna go ahead and continue on down the flex tubing. Okay, so I pretty much have all my wire through the flex tubing now. So I'm gonna take another one of my flex tubing clamps and I'm gonna place it here in the middle. And not only is this gonna hold the position upright, it's also gonna clamp those wires into place. So like so. And you can see where the position is going to mount. I'm going to use this top track for both the front, the top, and then the side is actually going to mount on the side of the 20 by 40 V slot with a self-tapping screw. So here on the end of the flex tubing, you'll see we still have additional lengths of wire. And the only thing we're going to exclude is our LED light ring wire. So just put that wire to the side because that's going to be attached to our power supply. And we want that to be mobile. And on this opposite end, we're gonna go ahead and take another flex tubing clamp and run that on the very end of this flex tubing. And one thing to pay attention to when you attach this flex tubing clamp is you want the seam to be facing inward. So we don't really see that. This really helps the look of this, uh, this flex tubing. So if you need to, just kind of open that up and uh, turn that into place. And it works the same way for the additional flex tubing clamps. So turning our attention to the front flex tubing clamp that's close to the black box, what we're going to do is go ahead and take one of our M5 8 millimeter screws and run that through the clamp. Sometimes you got to put a little force on the clamp just to seat it into position. And then you can run that screw through. So once you get that screw in place, what I like to do is just go ahead and put a drop in T-nut right on the end of the screw, and this will prevent clamp from coming loose. From there, make sure you uh, you don't pull these connectors out of the black box. So what I like to do is position this first, and then pressing in, you can just go ahead and tighten down that drop-in T-nut. Just like so. Once again, make sure that all those connectors are still in place. And another thing I like to do is just bring this clamp up. They are flexible, so I like to just position it upright. And that way I still have room underneath. And just make sure to tighten that into place. All right, so since we have this clamp in place, let's go ahead and move over to the middle clamp. So once again, taking the clamp, we're gonna run that eight millimeter screw through and then tie on one of the drop-in T-nuts. And from there, we're gonna use the top track once again. Make sure you put a little tension on the flex tubing. We don't want it to drag. And then from there, position that drop-in T-nut and tighten it into place. And then what I like to do is just go ahead and lift up on that flex tubing. Just kind of bring that clamp back into place. So it's really starting to come together now. Let's go ahead and move to the opposite end where our additional flex tubing clamp is. So now on this side, you'll see that we have enough of the flex tubing clamp to reach this end of the 20 by 40. So what we're gonna do is just go ahead and position your flex tubing clamp just like so, run your self-tapping screw through, then we're gonna tighten that down with our power drill. So just like so, make sure that that's nice and tight, and that looks excellent. Okay, so now that we have all of our flex tubing clamps in place, what we have here is some additional length of wire that we need to go ahead and bundle. What I'm gonna do is basically bundle everything except for that LED light ring. So taking some of our zip ties here, I'm simply going to bunch these together, and I'm going to zip tie along the bunch of wires here just to keep everything nice and tight. So I'm gonna start with that, and then I'm gonna zip tie this end. So once you have those wires bundled, what I like to do is run this from underneath our flex tubing here. And I'm actually going to zip tie this to the flex tubing just to keep a low profile and hidden. So taking two zip ties, what I'm gonna do is combine these to make a larger zip tie here. So just like so, I'm gonna snip off the excess here. 
and coming through the bundled wire and over top of the flex tubing here. I'm gonna do one on this side. And then we'll snip off the excess here. And taking two more zip ties, we're gonna do one on the back end of the flex tubing. So let's go ahead and connect our zip ties. So now that we have our zip tie prepped and ready to go, let's go ahead and run that underneath the bundle of wire. All right, and once you have that into position, just go ahead and cut off the excess here of the zip tie. And now we have all of our wire bundled underneath. So that's looking sharp along with all of our flex tubing clamps wired through to the black box. So now let's go ahead and go to our additional spots where we're gonna put some zip ties and just really tie everything in together. So now coming back over here to the front of the black box, what we're gonna do is just go ahead and zip tie these wires here just to keep them nice and organized. And it also takes some of that strain off. If there's any type of pulling motion, the zip tie will actually absorb some of that force. And once again, make sure those connectors are fully inserted in the black box. Let's cut off the excess here. Excellent. So now let's go ahead and move to the left side of the machine, which is where our x-axis motor is. And we're going to go ahead and bundle up some of those wires as well. Okay, so over here on the x-axis side, you see we have our x-axis motor. What we're going to do is go ahead and zip tie this connector together. And then once again, I'm going to attach this to that 40 millimeter spacer. And then take your additional zip ties. I'm just gonna run across this and zip tie all these wires together. All right, that looks great. So let's go ahead and move to the Z axis. And right here on the Z axis, I'm gonna go ahead and zip tie this connector together. Okay, so as you can see, this is really looking sharp. We've got all of our wires managed and the flex tubing. This is really coming together. So this concludes the wire aesthetic portion of this step. So let's go ahead and move forward to the next step. So on this next step, we're just gonna simply be connecting our USB cable to both our black box and our device that we're gonna control our machine with. So this is a laptop here that I'm using. Of course, you can use a tablet, many other things, as long as you have an adapter cord for this uh, connection. So what we need to go ahead and do is just grab our USB cable. It's a serial port connection. So this will connect to our black box and then the USB will connect to our laptop. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect the USB section first. And from there, let's connect our serial port to the black box. So right here, you'll see the serial port connection for the black box. Just go ahead and take your USB cable and plug that in. So now that we've connected to the black box, let's go ahead and open up our laptop and let's move to the software portion. So the first thing that we need to do is go ahead and open up your browser. From there, let's go to openbuilds.com. Once you've reached openbuilds.com, we're gonna select the software tab and we're going to select the openbuilds control machine driver. So we have options here for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Since I'm using a Windows computer, I wanna go ahead and download for Windows. So go ahead and select the executable here. And what you will see here if you're running Windows is you'll see this uh, little prompt here that shows Windows protected your PC. Just go to more info and run anyway. From there, you'll receive a couple prompts. Just run through these real quick and install. Hit finish. And you'll see that the OpenBuilds control has started. So go ahead and select that. So once you have the OpenBuilds controller open, you'll see here that you have comp positions that are available. So we're gonna select the one that comes up first. So it's a COM27, it might be different with your computer, but you'll see a COM3, that's definitely not the one. So for us, it's COM27, and I'm gonna go ahead and connect. Now keep in mind, while I'm doing all this, the only thing that's plugged in is the USB to the black box. So there's no power provided to the board besides the five volts that are coming from the USB. So keep that in mind, we're not powering anything up yet. I will let you know when we are going to power up our machine and it will be shortly. So let's go ahead and unlock the alarm. It's the first thing you're gonna see and this is all just a safety precaution just in case you were to power on your machine. You have this alarm here that's gonna prevent you from doing any movements on your machine just in case you haven't set up your settings. So let's go ahead and unlock that alarm. We're gonna go into the second tab here, which is Gerbil Settings. So go ahead and select that. And from here, this is really easy. So for any machine profile, 
depending on what machine you've purchased from Open Builds, you have default settings. So what you do is you select this here. We're actually running the lead machine 1010. That's the one I'm going to select, but I wanna go ahead and show you this real quick. So as you can see, you can scroll down. You have all of the Open Builds machines. So any type of bundle that Open Builds provides, you will have a default setting here, which is extremely convenient. This is super easy. All you do is select the machine profile. From there, it's gonna upload all your settings based on the calculations that are provided by Open Builds. So that is awesome. So what we have here is a Lead Machine 1010. We're gonna go ahead and select the Lead Machine 1010. And right here to the right of the default setting, you'll have an option for limit switches installed, which we do have limit switches installed. If you purchased an Open Builds Lead 1010 and you purchased the wiring kit, you're gonna have limit switches installed. So go ahead and select that. From there, all of your values are gonna be inputted into the system. So this is all advanced settings here. So you can also come back once you learn more about the machine and the different settings and how they affect your machine, you can definitely go back in here and tweak those settings. These are all pre-populated and calculated accurately, so there really is no need for that. We have come up with these values based on rigorous testing with these machine profiles. So rest assured, these settings are accurate. So once you have all of these settings and put it here to your controller board, what we're going to do now is go to the save to firmware option here and select that from there it's going to save all these settings into your controller so it's that simple so what we're going to do now is just give you a little overview of the software and what it's capable of this open builds control machine driver is awesome it's constantly being updated and innovations are made on the daily so it's really cool we have a lot of options here you have tooling options which is to control through an IoT relay, if you prefer that option, you can definitely turn on laser, plasma, coolant, spindle. You have the option to turn it off as well. You have your homing option here, your jog widget, which is really cool. You can go ahead and scan this QR code and you can jog your machine around from your phone. Along with that, you do have your alarm state here. That's something to keep in mind if you do have hard limits enabled, which this default setting does, and you hit a micro limit switch, this alarm state is going to activate. So that's something to keep in mind and you can always just unlock the alarm. And then we have our stop job here. So if you're running G code and you don't like the way the machine's acting, if you think that the G code needs to be modified, you can always stop the job and it is instant. So you have that option as well as powering down your machine. I do like the option to have it on the software, which is really nice. And then over here you have openbuilds.com. So you can always just go back to the website here which we will do in a minute because we need to go to the cam g-code generator to upload our first g-code which is really cool and along with that we have the troubleshooting tab here which is extremely nice what we have here is inputs and end stops you can actually test your micro limit switches before you actually activate your machine so along with that you do have options here for flashing if you do need to flash new firmware to your board this is an option here which is built into the controller so Along with that, we do have uh, some communications here of installed versions, back in queue blocked, we have connection status. So all this stuff is very useful. Definitely something to keep in mind when you are delving into the software. So we also have the Open Builds forum here. So if you have questions and things like that pertaining to the software, make sure to select this, send your question, and Open Builds engineers will respond as soon as possible. So just know that we are here to support the community and any questions that you might have pertaining to the software or any of the builds, make sure you submit that to the forum. So now that we have some of these features explained here on the software, let's go ahead and look into jogging the machine around. The exciting part, we're gonna power up our power supply as well as our black box, and we're gonna actually move this machine. It's gonna be alive, which is super exciting. The first steps of any build. So first what we need to do is just go ahead and power up your power supply first to make sure that it's plugged into an outlet. And one of the first things that you'll see is your LED light ring will turn on and that is plugged into your power supply. So just use that as an indicator as well as the light on the power supply. And then you're going to power on your black box. So once you have the black box turned on, you should hear your motors activate as well as your fan running on the black box. So we know we have power to our machine. So let's go ahead and jog the machine around a little bit here. So currently I'm at a homing position. So what that means is 
wherever my micro limit switches are placed, which we have enabled these for a homing cycle, to bring this to a starting position. So that's where my machine is located currently. Now, one thing I want to show you before we uh, jog the machine around is the troubleshooting tab once again. Now that we have power provided to our black box, what we need to do is go ahead and test these limits. Make sure that all of them are operating properly. So I'm going to test one here on the Z-axis. Once I push in the plunger, you'll see an alarm state activate. So that means a hard limit was triggered and this is basically a precaution just in case you were to hit that limit on accident. Rest assured, your machine is going to stop. So I'm going to keep that alarm activated so we can see what happens when I select this micro limit switch. So this is a Z limit and you're going to see the status turn on. So it turns to on. When I release it, it goes to the off position. So that's one example. We also have the X, same thing. It'll flash on once the plunger is pushed and release once you release it. So from there, we're going to go ahead and unlock the alarm, which another thing I want to show you too is when you, let's say you accidentally hit one of the limit switches and you come to this alarm state, all you have to do is press clear alarm, which is really convenient. So you have to go all the way back to the alarm and select unlock alarm. So clear alarm and that clears the alarm state. So it's just a really nice feature. Just make sure everything's functioning correctly before you start operating your machine. So now moving back to the control tab here, we're going to go ahead and jog the machine around. Now, before we do so, I want to go ahead and point out a couple things about the movements. Now, negative movement for the Y axis is going to bring the machine to the front position. So where I'm at now is considered a front position. It would go further. So you're going to end up interacting with the micro limit switch if you move in a negative position. So what we need to do is move the Y axis in a positive movement, which can be back into the field. And if you're if you had material on your work surface, it would be going back towards that. So this is a good way to uh, understand the positive and negative movements. Now for the X axis, you also have positive movement, which is going to move to the right. Negative movement is going to move to the left. Z axis, positive movement is going to move up. Negative movement is going to move down. So just keep that in mind. And there are settings here for Gerbil, so you can invert the axis if you prefer it in another way. These default settings are generally the standard, so I wouldn't suggest delving into that yet, but if that's something that you are considering, you can always go back to the Gerbil settings here, and you have direction and version. So what you have here is your, your Z-axis direction, Y-axis direction, and X. And in this software, it is super easy to understand because all you have is tabs here that you select, and that will be the axis that will be inverted. So the same thing with the homing direction. So, you know, just keep that in mind if you do have a, a situation where you prefer it in another configuration. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jog the machine around. So we're moving our Y axis positive 10 millimeters. And that's another thing to keep in mind. We all have increments here and I always start off at 10 to one, depending on the axis, the Z axis, especially Always start with a one millimeter increment or a 0.1 to make sure that your direction is correct. So if you wired something wrong, you might have an inversion incident. So just keep that in mind and make sure that you have the right millimeters selected before you move that axis. So as you can see, man, this is running smooth. That black box is something else. Super powerful. I love it. That's how a machine is supposed to sound. That's awesome. So moving the Y axis around, let's go ahead and move the X smooth as butter. Man, that's awesome. So yeah, this is a positive movement here, We're moving 10 millimeter increments here. You can always adjust that to hundred, making sure that you do have room. So I have room here on the Y axis. So I'm moving that and you can move back because we have room at hundred millimeters. Same with the X axis you can always move that position back. So let's go ahead and move on to the Z axis here. And we're going to delve down into the material. So that's, you know, just the term that I use as far as moving the position of the Z axis down. So let's go ahead and move the Z axis down. I set it to one millimeter increments. Now I'm going to move it to a negative movement. So as you can see, the Z axis is going down. That's precisely what we want. 
Positive movement is going to bring the z-axis back up. Excellent. So everything is functioning correctly on the machine, and this thing sounds great. It looks great. This is really exciting. So what we need to do now is go ahead and test our homing cycle. So up top here, I had mentioned at the beginning, what we have here is our home all button. So what you can do is just go ahead and select that. And if you see your machine going in the wrong direction, so you should know where your micro limit switches are first off. If you see your machine going in the opposite direction, you need to make sure you stop the job or power your machine off. And if you need to adjust the position of a micro limit switch, then you also need to stop that job and power your machine off. That's just precautions. I want you guys to stay safe. So make sure you keep that in mind when you're running these either G code or a homing cycle. So I know the positions are correct on my machine. If you follow along with this video, you are a okay. So make sure just in case if something was done differently, you just make sure you paying attention to where the machine is going. So let's go ahead and home all. So it always starts with the Z axis first. So what it does is it finds the micro limit switch and then there's a homing debounce. So what it does is it backs off five millimeters and then it reattaches the micro limit switch. And that's how it finds its homing position. So now it found the X and it's moving to the Y and it does the debounce. That's perfect. So now we're back at a homing position here, which is really convenient when you're doing manufacturing because if you have your machine all the way to the back right corner, cause you're doing like multiple projects, it's always nice to just be able to press a button and not have to worry about where your machine's going. Okay. So now that we have our machine configured, all our settings are correct. Let's go ahead and run some G code. So like I said, we had this openbuilds.com option right here. All we have to do is go ahead and select that. That's going to take us directly to the open builds website, which is really convenient because we need to go to the cam side of the software. So that is computer assisted manufacturing. If you did not know, and right here at the top, you will see open builds cam G code generator. So let's go ahead and select that. And like the control software, this is constantly being updated by the open builds engineers. And let me tell you, this is some really cool software. Once again, it's intuitive and extremely easy to use, which really helps for the new user. So let's go ahead and start with a new workspace. So the first thing that we're going to do is go into our settings. I'm going to keep this generic as possible because what we want is for you to be able to follow this with any machine profile, which you can, because it is that simple. All you do is go into your settings. And once again, you are going to choose from defaults. So like I said, we're using the open builds lead machine 1010 on this video, but if you have a different machine profile, all you have to do is select the tab and scroll down and you have all these options for any open builds machine bundle that is sold. So this is really convenient because this is already going to upload all of your parameters for the machine. So we have the open builds lead machine 1010. So we're going to go ahead and select that. And once again, for the controller board that you're using, anything that open build sells, we have a default option for. We have the black box, but there are options for even generic Gerbil. You have the smoothie board, Spark Concepts X Pro, but we all know we want a black box. So we're gonna go ahead and select that because that's the best controller right now on the market. So with that being said, we have options here for your tooling. So we have here a uh, spindle that is uh, selected. Generally with a router, you're gonna be using a spindle or a router and uh, you also have options here for missing cooling turn laser on and off which you can also do from the control software so we're just going to leave the spindle in there but we're going to be operating this machine without any type of tooling in there the one thing that i have to say is when you're running g-code you really want to familiarize yourself with the machine and how it moves and how g-code works so before you just go ahead and slap a router in there unless you have some experience just make sure that you run your machine without any type of tooling in there just to make sure everything is functioning correctly. So that's just uh, CNC 101. Just make sure that machine is functioning correctly before you uh, go ahead and run a job. So on down, you'll see that all of our custom defaults are already preset from that default setting. So what we want to go ahead and do is just save the settings and it's that easy. So as you can see, we have our workspace right here. You can also adjust the position. There's options here so you can understand how to use your mouse or if you're using a laptop, it's a little bit different, but you can zoom into the plane. You can understand, you know, the dimensions you're working with. Just really cool stuff here. You also have tooling options here. 
as well as your workspace options. So if we go back to the workspace, you'll see that we have text, circle, rectangles, so you can design different things. You also have your file setting here, which if you open that up, you'll see you can also just go ahead and start with the new workspace. You can open a workspace, save a workspace, open the Hello World example, which we will do in just a minute. You can import from the parts library as well. And these are some of the different uh, files that you can download. So, so you have DXF, SVG, just a standard image, Gerber, Excelion, I mean pretty much anything, which is really cool. And there's a really nice feature too. You can actually drag and drop an image in here. And from there, this software will input that into your workspace. So just like a Google image, if you just drag that in here, it'll go ahead and upload that into the workspace, which is really cool, really simple. So what we wanna go ahead and do is just open the Hello World example. So what we have is CNC, you also have the laser, which gives you a rastering effect, totally different Hello World. So since we're uh, routing per se, we're not actually routing, but we're using a CNC router. Let's go ahead and select the Hello World. And from there, you'll see we're calculating the tool paths here. So this is already gonna go ahead and generate some G code for you, which is really convenient. And this is, if you didn't know, and you haven't messed with the software at all, this is where you would add your vectors. So you have options for pocket. As you can see for this one specifically, we are going to use a path outside. We're using a pocket and then a path inside. So these are some of the options that are used in CNC control, but this is how you would add that. So you would select your image if you had something different. And from there, you could go ahead and select what kind of vector path you would like to use. And another thing to keep in mind is if you have any questions about the software, or anything like that, there are plenty of resources available at openbuilds.com. I can't stress that enough. We keep a build page for everything that we do here, and it is listed with tons of information as well as a community backing it, a community of engineers and people that have constantly been innovating different software and machines. So rest assured, make sure to sign up for openbuilds.com because that is where you're gonna find out all kinds of ideas and information that you need. Since we have the Hello World set up here, the G code is populated. Let's go ahead and just transfer this G code to the Open Builds control. So just select this button here, and what you will see is the 3D viewer here, which is another cool feature of this control software. So this is something else you can manipulate and simulate. So if we wanted to simulate this before we ran it, you could go ahead and do that. And you can also change the speed. So I'm gonna go ahead and bump this up to 100 times. And let's watch this thing work. So you can see it's going through all the paths. So this is exactly how the machine is going to operate, which is really cool. So you can always just go ahead and stop that simulation. So the next thing that we need to go ahead and do, even when we're doing an air cut, we need to understand our zero points. So we're gonna act as if we were actually starting a project. So what we need to do is focus on our DROs, which is the digital readouts. The digital readouts indicate where your machine is in the work plane. So as you can see, we have the Z-axis, which is showing 19.40 millimeters. So all of these need to be zeroed out. We're at a homing position currently. So first, let's go ahead and start off by moving the X-axis. So I'm going to move that with 10 millimeter increments here just to slightly move that out of the way so we can set our zero point. And another thing to keep in mind too is gauging how large your workspace is, even though we do have the settings correct in the camp software, is the check size option here, which we'll go into a little bit later. Um, let's go ahead and move the Y axis. So we're just going to move that out slightly and the Z axis. So I move that down to one millimeter increments here and we're gonna go ahead and bring the Z-axis down slightly. Since the G-code will be acting like we are working on a piece of material, it's going to delve down and back up. So we wanna just go ahead and set our zero point at a position that's proper for the Z-axis. So here we have our digital readouts. Now what we need to do is set our zero point. That is something that you will do no matter what job you're working on, you always need to set a zero point. The zero point is basically the project start point. So anytime you're working on a project, you always need to make sure you tell the machine, hey, this is where I'm starting. So it's just really easy to remember, just always set that zero. So we're gonna set the zero for X, Y, and Z. You do have options to do it individually, 
but we're going to do it all at once. So go ahead and set that and you see that all these digital readouts are indicating that we are at a zero point. So now let's go to the check size option. So if you are unfamiliar with how large your project's going to be, if you're using G code from a previous job or anything like that, it might be a good idea to just go ahead and check that size. So we're going to go ahead and check the size now. All you have to do is set the zero point and then select check size. So right now it's just going to run the parameters of the job and you can see exactly where it's going to end up. Just really awesome. That's a really cool feature. Absolutely love that. So now that we're back to the starting position, you see that we're, it's showing a 1.59 millimeters. Um, so we just want to go ahead and set that zero point once again, just to make sure that the software does indicate that we are at zero. So another thing to keep in mind is once we set the zero point, we can always go back to zero. So if I were to move the Y axis out and the X doesn't matter. Yeah, we're all the way out of our zero point, but the software is here to save us. All you have to do is select this first option here, go to zero. And from there, the machine is going to go right back to where you started. So everything is back at zero. That's perfect. So now without further ado, let's go ahead and run this job. So right here at the top, you're going to see an option to run the job. Let's go ahead and select that. So right here, I'm following the 3D viewer. You also have a G code editor. So if there's some G code you wanted to change, it's really simple to do so, but you can watch the machine here. But I like the 3D view just so I can see exactly where I'm at. And you also have a progress bar here at the bottom, which is really convenient so you know when this job will be completed. Okay, so since we've watched our machine run around, it looks like it's in great shape. This build really turned out nice. Everything is running smooth. That black box is super powerful. The machine sounds great. It looks great. So what we need to go ahead and do is just let's go ahead and stop the job. Unless you want to continue running it, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and select stop job. Look at that. It's immediate. So let's go ahead and clear the alarm here. So after clearing the alarm, you can see your machine is completely stopped here at the position where it left off. So what we need to go ahead and do now is just go ahead and home all. So now the machine's home, that concludes the software portion of this video. Okay, so that concludes the wiring of the lead machine and it turned out great. Man, this is exciting. This machine's up and running, it's alive. Just imagine all the projects you can manufacture with this machine now especially with the black box on your side. So make sure to stay tuned for future videos. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, and make sure to check out the Open Builds forum and join the community.